Facts. I am Nick Face. We have a fun show planned today. We're going to be covering all of the four sports, the big teams that have a lot of things that need to be talked about. We haven't seen you since the Patriots last won the Super Bowl. Yes, they did. They ended up getting the Super Bowl by a score of 13-3. to They won against the Rams, so congratulations to the Patriots. I have their new hat to uh, add to my collection. Tom is digging out another hat from his collection, and there's a reason why. We'll talk about that a little bit later in today's show. And then we will also talk about the Celtics as they return from the All-Star break. They got a lot of uh, momentum on their side to hopefully make a run for a playoff spot and have a successful ride in the playoffs. And we also have the Red Sox who have started their workouts, and all, all the pitchers and catchers have reported to uh, Fort Myers, and they are ready to start the 2019 season. But as Alex Cora says, we are not turning the page. Because the page, why does it need to be turned? It was such a good page. Yeah, it doesn't need to so be turned. So we need to keep the page Just, going. Yeah. So we'll talk about that too. It's got to be a scroll. <laughs> we have Tom Smith here. Needs no really introduction. Yeah, yeah, Same with yeah. Phil. Welcome, gentlemen. We're regulars on this show. <laughs> Let's talk about the Patriots first. Um, your score prediction was what from when we did our show last? 30 to 16. I got one number right. You got one number right. <laughs> and Phil, you, you also predicted a win, correct? I did. We were uh, discussing earlier. I forget exactly what I had. I think it was like 24-20 or something like that. Or Right in that ballpark, I believe. Yeah. Was I 28-24? Yeah. You were Tony right. Romo. I was Tony Romo. That's I think, right. Yeah. Moral of the story, folks, is they did win, but it was a win that I don't think any of us predicted or expected. But, the way it was, the way it was done. Sure, yeah. I was, I was saying to Phil earlier that this is the biggest blowout that the Pages are going to have in the Super Bowl, probably. <laughs> so. Ten point margin. Yeah. Well, even then, we were talking. I'm like, they also had points on the board. Like, you had that three, you know, the field goal, had three points there, but you also had drives that were just, you know, the fourth and one. And a bunch of the, the first drive, drive with the yeah. first pass. So you had a couple drives where they were moving the ball, as Belichick had put it too. They're moving the ball, they, but they just stalled out at one point. And I think they had a lot of opportunities. And Brady, you know, Brady didn't play a great game. But no, he did not. When he needed nope. to, though, they got something. But you know what? It favored them too because golf didn't really play yeah, a great no. game either. So the pressure wasn't there. I really. think we talked about this in the Super Bowl leading up to the game. Is that there's going to be a moment in that Super Bowl where golf is going to choke or mm -hmm. throw it up and get an interception on yeah. some sorts. Well, we ended up having that. Yeah. It ended up being kind of the, the turning point of that game. Yeah. That was kind of your sign sealed delivered another, another Harmon. Super Bowl uh, win. Yeah. My well, overall, my overall, picks, my so overall e yeah. expectation from the game was it was a game where if Julian Edelman wasn't on the field, Patriots win the one. Oh, they're still undefeated with Gronk and Gentlemen in the Super there Bowl. There you go. So. Yeah. <laughs> that was another point that we also talked about. When you have that combination there, they're perfect. It was Jason McCourty's biggest game of the season. One of his biggest plays. As I a just think overall on the That's whole us. defensive side of this, the ball, it was their best game of the season on the defense. Yeah. You can look at people like Trey Flowers. You can look at players Kyle like Kyle Van Noy. Van Noy, Ooh. who was amazing. I, I really so like Kyle Van Noy. MVP. Yeah. Really like Kyle Van Noy. Oh, he's great. I love him. He. I love how he talks after it. I love and you how had Gil does. Gilmore. Gilmore was Gilmore's the one with. Too. It wasn't Harmon with the interception. It was Gilmore with the interception. It was, but it does seem like Harmon always it, has. But Harmon also <laughs> had a really Harmon was involved too. with a lot yeah. of Harmon had a lot of it. things that were involved from the game, from everything. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. He had that he big play that, in the end zone. He broke zone. up yeah. the big play that was, was in the, the play end zone. before. The play before that, uh, I think. I think it was the play before the, the pick. Yeah. I think or a player, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got a total team effort from everybody that was yeah. there. You also had your punter. I was going to say, yeah, including who was your an, punter. <laughs> it was awesome. Who could have very well been your MVP of the game. Yeah. Imagine giving the MVP to your punter. I, why not? That, that would have been crazy. Yeah, that would have been great. People would have hated it. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, right? I would have loved hey, it. Hey, but, you know, just another reason to, you know, hate the Patriots. Yeah. But, we punt so well. I mean, so the, so I, well. I got to say, the best player on the Rams was Brandon Cooks. He picked apart that defense, and he was the yeah. only one that could actually make a play. Yeah. He had like 100-something yards of receiving, yeah. right? Who was the big receiver, a couple of receivers that were out for the Rams? That Cooper was, Cup. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. Yep. But that, that, he, he was definitely somebody that was missed in that offense. He's been big out time. For a bit, and then right? Todd Gurley didn't play that much either because he was, was still hurt. hurt. Yeah. Todd Gurley definitely before. was more hurt than, than people thought he was, so yeah. he kind of toughed it out. I was just surprised with the whole McVay game call, that mm -hmm. we didn't see them mix up that running game enough. 
Didn't seem like they did a lot. You give no, the ball I to think, C.J. Anderson. I think they were scared to. You really want to put the ball in the in the hands of Jared Goff to win you a Super Bowl? Yeah. He looked like he was not even on the same planet. Uh, he had opportunities. in that Super Bowl. Like but, I yeah. said, if it wasn't for Brandon Cooks, they wouldn't have even gotten any first downs. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It was just a crazy. It was a crazy game. The whole the whole Patriot way thing with how they they really won that game though. He have to look at that fourth quarter. When Brady yeah. had that ball and he looked for Edelman, Gronkowski with big catches. Burkhead. You had James good. White with big plays. Yeah. Burkhead with big plays. That was your that was your that was your way that you were going to win that game. That yeah. showed you yeah. right there that from all those things clicking, you knew the Patriots were going to get the job done. There. If the Rams did anything right, it was stopping Sonny Michel because yeah, he really he, didn't do much. No, he no. had a, he had like a decent game, but he didn't have a crazy explosive. No, it wasn't, it wasn't Kansas City or Chargers, LA yeah. game. No, no, it was not. Well, like it that. was an LA game, just not. <laughs> oh yeah, I keep, yeah, that was oh, also, LA, LA uh, Chargers. Yeah. Yeah. that's correct. Um, Two LA teams. They just so beat. looking at looking at the whole picture here with with what happened and now couple weeks later with the Super Bowl being over with stuff. What where where do we go now? What what happens next? Odell Beckham? No. Please no. <laughs> Look in his Please eyes. Please no. It was great. We need somebody. Uh, we need a deep threat. I would love it to have him be a tailback. But why? Throw. Why why would you want Let's back it up a little bit. There was a report <laughs> that said the Patriots were last season very interested yeah, in trying to aggressive. trade for Odell yeah. Beckham Jr. Let's put the facts out there right now. We all know his story. He's one of the more talented receivers in football. I will give him that. But the guy is one of the biggest divas that's ever been. No, is he really a big diva? Or I, is he I like... really think he is. Okay, but he says OBJ is a diva. Look at Randy Moss. There you go. But and look at him after he Randy left the Moss Patriots. Randy Moss never won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. No, no, no. But I will say, I will say this. Like, if you... Follow that same model. You can maybe get a year out of him. It's just like a one-year thing, if that's possible. I don't know what, how much is left on his. I'm sure Tom now. Brady would love it. Yeah, you I know think what I, mean? I think Belichick could turn him around, turn, change his attitude. For one, all you need is one and year. He's still all young. You need is one. But what a slap he's in still... the face, though, to me, it would be to like an Edelman who's getting three million dollars this year. Yeah, but next the, yeah, year, no. and then, then you have Odell Beckham coming in, who's going to get what, fifteen? But I don't, you is. don't think that that's going to cause some turmoil? Well, because yeah, yeah. Edelman and Brady have the same attitude. They would rather cut their pay to better the team than to take more pay and just keep the At this the same. stage of their career, though? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I think that is a legit thing where Brady might be like, eh. It's a good conversational piece. I will yeah. say that 100%. Well, I think it, he'd be a lot of fun. I don't know. But also, but, I don't think Brady could take advantage of everything he, he does. I mean, he can do. I, I think the more Brady's tools, so and I agree, the more tools in the toolbox are better than for Brady. Yeah, but I also think he can't fully, like... But imagine Toss how much it down the field. I, I don't uh, the way he's been for yeah, years yeah. before. But yeah. imagine how much different the Super Bowl would have been if they had Josh Gordon, or if they, you know, had. Would it have up. been? I know. I, I'm with him. There would have been. I, would it have been? Because the defense really shut everything down. Well, did you see, did you see any deep threat in that game? No. You didn't. No, hear, you didn't. You didn't hear Dorsett's name. You hardly heard Hogan's name after the first quarter. Well, well Hogan, they really tried to feed it to him though. Hogan's one player that absolutely should not be back quarter. next year. I, I'm a, I, I think the ship has sailed on Chris Hogan. I think everything's over. Shipping out of, shipping out of like, Boston for him. Who's coming back? I've, I've been done with Hogan since, the, since I don't know, the midway point of the season. I am. He had a, but Kansas City, he had a great catch. Like yes, that, that was a very good, yes. But one great catch was, doesn't make it. No, I mean, I, but I'll take what I I'll take He had his can, moment. Guess, he yeah. had his moment. Even Philip Dorsett had a moment. He had a couple. Yeah. He had uh, the most receiving touchdowns, I think only two. I think there was yeah. only two TDs. Receptions, right? So Odell Beckham is one of the players that's named. He's still young. He's still under 30. It would be. Antonio I, Brown? Why not? Why not? You want to take one of the one of the castoffs from the Steelers? Talk talk about talk about another diva. Yeah. I think Odell is more of a diva than Brown. But, they, but they're both equal. They have their similarities. Different. Very talented. Um, but you know, Odell Beckham has not shown up on a Mass Singer episode yet. So <laughs> that's true. That is that true. we know of. That is true. He that could be of. number yes. eight. Yes, that's a good know. point. That's no, a good that, point. I didn't know. Like I guess they filmed that during the summer. I'm like, where? When did Antonio Brown have time? It was kind of embarrassing how that episode came out right after the yeah, whole. Yeah, it really like, was around that time. How the Steelers kind of like 
floated off into the sunset. Oh, but but I, I mean, what, I think, you know, on the diva scale, is like 25 divas to 10 divas. How would you... How would you ascribe, like, Odell Beckham? How, how many much divas? Is, what is his diva status? His diva status okay. is diva percentage out of 100. I, I do feel that Odell, it's all about him. He's not a very, te- he's not a team player. Sure. And that's where I don't see him being able to fit into a Patriot system. They're an unselfish group. They, they, they care about time. each other. They want, they don't care about how many touchdowns certain people get. Their end goal is a Super Bowl. I don't think Odell's yeah. ever had that in his head. His end goal, I think, is, yeah, oh, I'm going to be have. the fantasy superstar of give, the year. No, give Belichick a couple months. and. Well, I mean, yeah, put him in a system. That, as you think he's going to listen to him? I I don't know. I think he'll look at the rings and be like, hey, let's take a take a shot. I think he's... I think anybody I think, I think anybody there. would want to still come to the Patriots to have a chance to win the Super Bowl while Brady is still at the helm. I, I agree on that. I agree on that. And that's why I actually think why not, man? Odell is more likely than a Brown yeah. or a some player like I, that. I, I think Odell is more of a diva because of the team he plays for than, They're a joke. than Brown. The Giants yeah, are a joke. And I think, I think Brown would be more selfish about whether he gets the ball or not uh, like or is targeted or if he's yeah. on the Patriots. You think? You could. Incentives... Pro Bowl stuff, all that. You're talking about Odell on the Giants, where they haven't made it to the Super Bowl what since... was their last one, 2012? 2012. Whatever the last time they beat the Patriots. Yeah. 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 And then you're talking about we Antonio forget, Brown. Like about those. Yeah. And you're talk, then you think about Antonio Brown, who's on the Steelers, who's been making it to the playoffs for the last, what, like five, six years? It's good. I mean, they've been there quite a bit. So I think... I mean, you're just more likely to get more out of Odell than you are Antonio Brown. Here's a question for you. If either of you two were, were Steelers fans, how would you be feeling right now? I mean, I, eh, I guess okay because i uh, frustrated because I thought the Steelers were a dangerous team mm-hmm. and they just happened to have like a bad draw. Because it was a Schuster had that like pop pass that like got picked off in New Orleans, which... They could have won that game if they were yeah. they were driving. Yeah, and they were they were a team that could possibly had uh, shown up, you know, in Foxborough and given you something. They had the players. They yeah, they always have the players. They've always had the firepower. Yeah, even without Bell, I think they'll still have something. What do you think? You know, even without Brown. Uh, I think they need a better coach. Yeah, I think the coach is part of the problem. I yeah. think he I think he creates the atmosphere of. Letting the players have a little bit too much say on certain things. Well, not so, even just having say. It, it's he lets them go free for all and do whatever they want in the locker room. And I think they're a very undisciplined group. Is that fair to say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that Le'Veon Bell is out not just because of the whole franchise thing on his contract, but I think it's because of maybe some of the. The way they go about their business on oh, the Steelers. Think, uh, you think I Bell, think Antonio Brown is in the same boat. Yeah. I like, think he, they're kind of fed up with could be the ownership group, could be how the the, the team flows yeah. with their coach, what their maybe overall objective is. Um, I think a lot of players don't like Ben Roethlisberger. I think that's uh, yeah. I that think that's a be the, big part. Well, because well, he, go, he goes for the big him. he goes for the big name guys. He doesn't throw to everybody. He. Doesn't really spread well, it out. I think they, they tailor a lot of like, or they kind of adjust a lot of rules to him because he's, you know, he's that, he's their quarterback. He, he's that guy. He doesn't really have a great head on his shoulders either, you know, motorcycle yeah, accidents. Yeah, it doesn't seem a motorcycle racist. accident, like sexual misconduct, all that whole thing, everything. I mean, the alleged. I, I, I've never been a fan of the guy. I mean, I know he's had certain talent from stuff, but. He's a good player, but yeah, he's not a. I think seem he's like a D nice, bag. Yeah. Doesn't seem like a nice dude. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. Um, but back to our original point here with thinking about how we look at for the Patriots for next season. You obviously have the other question and the soap opera story of what's happening with Gronkowski. Do you guys have an opinion on it? Because I have mine. What he do you should, think? should uh, pack he, it up and go. He's flowing away. He, I mean, he should. He should do Movie it star right Gronk? up on the sunset. Movie star Gronk? X, uh, what or do you call it? W- XFL Gronk? XFL, WWE, or Gronk. AF, a- yep. AA, F- whatever it is. Yeah. AAF, is that the new yeah. uh, football league right now? The Vince McMahon <laughs> show, whatever they call no, it. No, there's another league, AAF, that's happening right now. Yes, yep. Which is not affiliated with the XFL at all. 
It's on like NFL Network. Maybe they'll like, call it the Gronk FL. Well, Mike Martz is yeah. coaching, and, and Chris Sims, I think, is playing quarterback. Or one, uh, one of the Sims. I don't know. They yeah. multiply like cockroaches. Pro- probably <laughs> Phil, the 70 year old one of them, yeah. swinging it back there. One of the Sims. Like, Screw they you, just, CBS. They cloned him, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, uh, I, don't, I think he should leave. He should just, you know, he's. Been Taking more, a beating. I yeah, will agree exactly, on that. Yeah. I will agree on that. I'm not, I'm not against that point. Do you have a different side? No, I think it's I think it's time. You I, think he's done? I I mean, how many sixteen game, nineteen game seasons are you going to get out of him? Oh, yeah. Does it really matter? If yeah. You get him for three. What if you get him for three in the postseason and you win? I I don't like that because he hasn't. Yeah, you don't like that for your fantasy team. Well, no, well, I mean, no, you no, have to but play that year to get in the system you, you and need, play everything. You need a few regular season games to be ready for the playoffs. So tell me this. What if you go out in the draft and you draft some sort of a tight end, have him kind of get tooled and worked with with Gronk and everything, and tell Gronk, hey, we want you to stay as healthy as you can to load up for the next postseason run. Would you do that? It's it's it's, it's a possibility, but it, Here's the question, the report that but I the question is what he wanted to do. Yeah, that's well, kind of the basic. Into the desk. Uh, Mike Giardi from NFL Network has come out and said that Gronk has been at all the Patriots' workouts since the Super Bowl has been done. He's been at Gillette pretty much every single day. And he's told all of his teammates close to him that he wants another Super Bowl. I have heard he wants another ring. I've he wants another that. ring. I mean, if he does... He's listen, 30 if, years old. He's going to be... Is gonna, he 30 now? He's 30, he's, uh, yeah, he's 30 years old that right yeah, now. Yeah, if he wants to do it, he. I mean, by all means. But I think he that can't... he wants to go out when Brady goes out, the more I'm hearing those reports and uh. stuff. I think what you're going to see, and it's going to be unfortunate when it does happen, whenever the all era is done, those guys are gonna, is yeah. they're all going to go out together. Belichick, Brady, Edelman, Gronk. Uh-huh. They're all going to go out to the pasture together. Well, it's going to be a tough, I think, First couple years after they go. Yeah, hey, but, but Brady happen, has man. said many times he, he's going to 45. He stays healthy. Knock on wood. He's well, at 41 right now. As long as he's enjoying the game, that's yeah. all that he cares about. I, I mean, we did see a little bit of a, of, a, of, a, of a drop back from this year, but again, I think I he kinda... played hurt. I think Brady played hurt oh, most sure. of the season. Sure. Uh, well, there was that uh, that knee injury he had that he he um, that mended towards the end of the season. Yeah. But I also think you know he's. 42 now, or is he 41? He'll be going into 42 season come August. Yeah, I mean, this 41-year-old guy who gets hit, uh, doesn't get hit as much as you think because his O-line is pretty good, Yeah. but gets hit a lot and is playing a young man's game. And so, like, it's going to, you know, things are going to sing, and I I don't want him to murder himself in order to get that next one. Yeah, but but you know life expectancy is rough on football players. You don't want to see anybody take a toll, specifically like a Gronk. I mean, he gets yeah. beaten up and dinged up all the time. Same yeah. like Edelman and stuff. But Brady looks a lot better than Roth- Roethlisberger, and Roethlisberger oh, is absolutely. like, what, five he, years younger than he him? He does look like some sort of beat-up Sam. Roethlisberger looks, looks like, like what Brady should look like right now. Yeah, like just a sack of defeat. Yep. Just like a greased-up sack of whatever. The fat Will Ferrell. Yeah. yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> looks well, real Ferrell hideous when he wears big. that Bumblebee uh, costume mm-hmm. out there, mm-hmm. that uniform when they have to wear that. The other, the other nice note uh, on the Patriots front and the coaching staff, there are some changes that are coming, but one of the mainstays that's consistent, we know, obviously, is Belichick and McDaniels. They're there. But Dante Skarniecki back again for another season for the oh, offensive wow. line well, is he huge. Can't. They're and just he's already 70-something years old. Well, they're not letting he's him the leave. best in the business. Yeah, sure. He's, he's going to he, go out when Brady honestly, goes out. He, honestly, was probably the overall playoff MVP of this, uh, of this year because of how much coverage Brady got. I mean, oh, Brady sure. was... Protected pretty, 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 pretty well. Pretty well. Will he die on the field? <laughs> Probably. Coaching. And Probably. they're like, uh, can you resuscitate yeah. him for this next play? <laughs> Probably. Like, uh, Dante! <laughs> Get up. Don't stop being a jerk. <laughs> we need you! <laughs> but you never... No, but that's, that's nuts. That that, that's, what, back. That's, a, that's a good thing to see. I no, mean, yeah. they, they, they need him for that, and I don't think that they're ready great, on the, uh, to, to pass the keys over to the next person yet. Yeah. So, do, do we know who's uh, replacing Brian Flores? Yes, we do. Um, that is Greg Schiano. You yeah. t- we talked about that. We did, yeah. um, I think time. on that last show, he was the former uh, Ohio State Offensive and court, uh, defensive court, whatever it was. Yeah, and he also, I think, worked with Rutgers. Rutgers. And Belichick has a very and good... And Tampa Bay, I think. Uh, and Tampa Bay, correct. He has a very good um, relationship with him. 
I, I like Brian Flores a lot. I mean, he re, he went out of mm. flying colors. How can how can you not go out the way that you did? Yeah. I, I think we'll I think they'll be okay under Shiano. I think Shiano will yeah. be okay with a good communication system between Belichick and him. I think is pivotal. And the players. I mean, that's that's like what's uh, almost more important in that regard. Have so where do we see responding. the Patriots next season? Is are, are we going to the Super Bowl again? We'll see. <laughs> Bring back Trey Flowers and try to. I mean, that's another guy, too, Trey Flowers. Trent Brown's another name. He mm -hmm. might be gone, yeah. Yep. But we also have uh, Waddle. Is that the guy we Eric drafted? Eric Waddle, yep. <clears throat> and uh, I forget the other. Uh, Wynn. Wynn? To Wynn? To, um... Isaiah Wynn was out this year. Yeah, he was. But that's the other guy. Yeah, the he other should right be back tackle. next yeah. year. Hopefully be better. He's a rookie who we got in just in preseason went down. But he probably would you know what's scary? replace a Trent Brown. Patriots actually have a better team going into next season than they did this year. Maybe, if they, depend on what they do. Health-wise, I think they do. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it depends what they do with their receiving core. Yep. And if they maintain, if they bring back Shelton and or a Claiborne and Last question Flowers. I have on the Patriots front before we turn to, um, we got to talk about those Bruins. Man, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm excited about I'm, them. I'm, I'm waiting for it. That's your nap time. I'm waiting so, for it. I'm um, going to have a little cookie, have a little warm milk, and just. Miami has been reported that they're going to be releasing uh, Danny Amendola. Oh, yeah. I saw that. Huh. Is that somebody that you would take a flyer on again to bring back? I mean, I guess. <laughs> if, would as, you? If you get rid of Chris Hogan, absolutely. I think that's what they're probably going to do. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know. I feel bad for Hoagie. Because he already has a guaranteed stuff that's from Miami. I mean, he doesn't have, what, give him $2 million? Oh, yeah, that's right. He... Give him $2 million? Hey, yeah. come on back. Let's would, have another run. I would, love, I would love to have him. Play off Dola? Back. I would like. Mm -hmm. I would like to see that. I would I, honestly. I'd like another like slot receiver from around the league. That's or like a, a half wide, half slot. And Especially he's thirty four. He... Yeah, Medilla. Thirty five, something oh, like that. that. He's I mean, a little older than Edelman. I know Edelman's like thirty three. Yeah. So yeah, yeah him, even though they're older with the stuff, yeah, younger, baby. I think they want to be younger. together. So yeah. let's yeah. let's see how that yeah, happens. Get him too. back on the punt and kick returns. Keep Edelman healthy. Yeah. Bruins need to be discussed. It should have really been the first topic, but we didn't get a chance to talk about the Patriots for their Super Bowl. So in case you've missed it, and I'm really disappointed if you have missed it, if you've also braved and stayed up very late the past couple days, probably like Tom and myself a little bit. Since Friday. <laughs> um, Bruins have been on the West Coast trip, and that means some of the games start at 10, 10.45, 10, 10, something 10.30, right, right around there. And it can be a long night sometimes. Well, last, well, we don't really like to tell, say when these shows were going, but one of the other nights that happened during the week, there was another overtime game where the Bruins uh, got a shootout win, mm -hmm. which is shocking to say. It's only their second shootout win of the year. They're now 2-2 two and two on that. But the Bruins are 7-0, 7-0. and oh. seven, seven and oh. seven In the last in seven row. games. In their last seven games. And they have... Uh... I think it's a 10-game point streak. It is a 10-game point streak. So, yeah. Because it has seven. some overtime losses in, in yep. between from that, too. Mm -hmm. So, in case you haven't followed, you need to. It's a team that I'm telling you now you should put some effort into um, so. following along with. <laughs> Ain't happening. I like this team a whole lot better than I do the Celtics, folks. And the reason I like it is because they're a gritty. They're a... Oh, gritty is one way of describing them. Do you have mm -hmm. another word to describe They're getting them? back to the way the Boston Bruins used to play. It's is fun. It it's fun, enjoyable it's, hockey. It's fun. They it's hard-hitting. It's They're fast. all meshing together. I guess that's the word to use it. You obviously have Bergeron, who just and, got over playing his 1,000th game in the Bruins mm -hmm. jersey. He's having another very good season. Martian is coming into uh, – Another really yeah. good And the funny right thing is, they're doing all this without Pasternak. And Pasternak is out for about two weeks. He has a thumb injury from a little uh, huh, yeah. uh, well, we enjoyable about... night. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> drunkenly stumbling, and then mm. what was the report? He, he, he missed a uh, step over something? He missed a step. Yeah. Missed a step. He, he sure did. Yeah. Uh, the step was not drinking the yeah. next drink. That was the it step probably he was. So. Oh, but but he was playing also... Fortnite, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, was, uh, with Carpal David Tunnel. Price, probably. Yeah. But uh, didn't the Bruins just pick up uh, a guy? Mm -hmm. Tom, would yeah. you like to there we go. throw in that news? Yeah, they uh, traded Ryan Donato on a conditional pick from next year's draft for uh, Charlie Coyle. Fifth round pick, was that right? Fifth round yep. pick, yep. Yeah. Um, talk, tell me a little bit about Charlie Coyle. What, what should the Bruins fans be expecting? So if you 
don't know who he is. He's a Boston guy. He played at BU. He is the type of player that the Bruins need, should have wanted for a while. Um, and definitely, it was definitely a good trade. Uh, getting rid of, I mean, getting rid of Donato wasn't ideal, but um, it's definitely going to work out in his favor. It's too. kind of funny how two BU guys get traded for one another. Yeah, that's kind of a deal. You have Donato, who is the 22-year-old BU mm-hmm. product, uh, came up last year. Was it last year or the year Two before? Two years ago. Two years ago. He came up kind of got Kind of got a cup of coffee. Bruins didn't really like um, his style. He's got a great shot. He puts the puck in the net pretty consistently, but it's the defensive style that's missing. It's going into the boards that I think they don't feel he's tough enough yeah, he's in, in going, that style. He's going um, hockey that the Bruins are. He's he's playing. He's going to be getting trained in Minnesota somewhere at one of their places. So I mean, it's not like he's going from like Arizona to Minnesota where he has to relearn the game. He's going from one hockey state to another. So it's yeah, it's going to be good, good for him. Yeah. Um, so Coyle gets the homecoming. He comes back to Boston. He's um, he's been a consistent player with Minnesota. Would yeah. you say? Yeah. I think it helps you definitely with your second or third line, like you said. Where do you think they slot him, though? Well, and whose spot is he really taking? He so, I mean, they said they said in the game against Vegas that he could be a winger, or I mean, his true position is a center, but he can also play as a winger. So, like he, I mean, he's universal. He could go anywhere, really. What's the need most for the Bruins? Where do they need him most right now? And I'm saying right now because in the past week, two weeks, we've seen a. A different Jacob DeBrusque, who's had goals in his past, what, four games? Five games? No, six, uh, seven, uh, six he's or on, seven. He's just on another tear, folks. It's just incredible. He, I think he... And he's been helping to anchor that that second line. Let's back it up, though, for a second. Yeah, after pa- After Sorry. Pasternick... <laughs> oh, you're away. Go ahead. Oh, hi. hi. What's your I name just, again? I just woke up. I'm sorry. That's Charlie Coyle. Um, CC. <laughs> Since Pasternik has been injured, you have Bergeron and Marshan together. They're with Heinen. Mm-hmm. That's been actually pretty good, mm-hmm. I would say. Your second line has been David Krejci, who you know on many years on this show, I have criticized the heck out of Krejci. I want him out of here. This has been like a rejuvenated right season for him. He looks... It, he looks healthy. He looks a lot better with DeBrusque and not Heinen on his line. Correct. And so DeBrusque is on that line, on the second line. Who else usually gets on the second line well, with them? Well, it was Pasternak for a couple of games until he got hurt. Yeah. Um, it's one of the new guys. I think it's like Trent Frederick or something. Has it been a Kari for a while, Nolachari? Nolachari's been on the third line with Bacchus. Um, uh, I, it's not JFK. No, it might have been. It might be Nordstrom. No, I think it's Nordstrom. Yep. I think it's Nordstrom. But... I think he might actually fit into the third line, probably best. Because Bacchus, even though he scored the game-winning um, shootout goal from that, has been a shell of himself. <laughs> what a coincidence it was to pick David Bacchus. I mean, what a ballsy choice that was from Bruce Cassidy. I thought it was hilarious that he was the one that ended I did, too. I'm like, oh, great. Bacchus is here. He's, he's alive. Just and lasers he, it. Lasers it. Does that, change? does that change their plans now because he scores that? Shootout goal? No. I don't think it should. I, I, I mean, there's so many places that you could put them, and there's just so many players that you don't want to move around right now. But, yeah, I mean, I would, I would probably take back his off, maybe move him down to the fourth line, move to. Uh, it, Cassie's, Cassie's got a tough choice again, <laughs> um, to make against St. Louis, but. And they don't play that till I think it's Saturday, Saturday. so they have some games the, off. Uh, yeah, they the probably 20th. really partied out in Vegas after that win that they had on Wednesday night. That yeah, must that have been a very good celebration huge. party. That was huge. Phil, I think, was there, weren't you? I was. Yeah. I flew back in this yep. morning. Was, was it good? It was all right. They rung it? up the bill quite a bit. Not as crazy as it usually gets. Good. But well, I mean, not they had awake. a few. The, this was their third straight overtime win. Well, yeah, overtime win. In, yep. out in out west because they ended up having to beat the Kings in overtime. 
They ended up having to beat San Jose in overtime. Yep. Vegas in overtime. Uh, Blues are on a hot streak right now too, so that's going to be interesting. And uh, Patrick Kane is on a hot tear right now. Chicago Blackhawks are becoming um, more prominent now. They were out of it, and now they're. I wouldn't say they're. I mean, the the West, the Western Conference right now is a shootout. It always bothered me that Chicago was in the Western Conference. It always bugged me. Midwest. Detroit used to be too, and now they're in the Eastern Conference. So who knows? You know. Well. Geography, no. They might, they might, yeah, who knows? they might add yeah. the uh, Nordiques back into the league and bring. Is the Western them. Conference oh, wow. still stronger than the Eastern Conference? <sighs> given, given the standings, yeah, absolutely. Okay. They, they, <laughs> I so could, looking I could, at it right now on a standing note, we all know that, or well, I would assume people out there know that the Tampa Bay Lightning are just on a mission. Mm-hmm. I think they're at ninety-seven points already this season. Like, they're the runaway number ones right now. It's going to be very hard to beat them. Uh, they could choke in the playoffs. Sometimes. Well, didn't, isn't that what happened last year? We Maybe had Tampa. Similar? Yeah, didn't we have Tampa? Well, we lost Tampa, to Tampa, you know, yeah. lost to because, Ovechkin and yep. the camp. And then we, um, then you have the Bruins that are in second right now. They're at 80 points as, after mm-hmm. last night, which is a, a little bit, they, they, there's a little bit more space between them. Well, then it drops what, down to what Toronto helped, at what 77. What helped was Toronto and Montreal lost uh, over the weekend. Correct. So, so Bruins right now with a second seed in the Eastern Conference. Wow, that's pretty nuts. In the Atlantic Division, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have it based on, you have the Atlantic, the Metropolitan. Well, uh, Met, yeah, the Atlantic and the Metropolitan. And Pittsburgh's trying to fight their way through the, uh, the standings now. Uh, Washington is, you know, average this year. Good, because I don't like Washington. <laughs> I've never been so, a fan of Ovechkin. I'm sorry. I've never I mean, you might, were you happy at least he won? No. Why? Some people are just, I don't know. I just rather see them lose. Okay, I, but here's my question. Guy. Here's my question. Would you rather Ovechkin? Knock some more teeth out Would you rather him. Ovechkin or Crosby <laughs> win a cup? I think I like Crosby better. I mean, you get the way. I think I like Crosby what's better. What's your, like, Crosby's more of a whiner? Is that more of the kind of? No, I, I think I hate, Ovechkin is I, more of a I, I hate that Ovechkin Crosby is the face of the NHL and that he is the biggest baby. I don't okay. think he ever. is Tom anymore. Oh, the face of it. I don't or? think he's the face of the NHL. Well, well he is not now. McDavid NHL. is a, is the face, but Crosby still he was for a he while. Was for a while, while yeah. I will agree. Is still that. a big baby. Since a kid, and, that's what like yeah. yeah. Who is you know? McDavid and Matthews are gonna, are fighting for the face of the NHL now. So. Hey. Overall, I think the trade was a very it was a positive. Oh, I absolutely. agree. I asked. I actually shot Tom a message when the trade came through. I'm like, is this something that we yeah, should like? He's like, who's Charlie Coyle? I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I I, I'm. I'm uh, to be honest, I didn't know. And I can't <laughs> believe that Tom actually <laughs> has on hat? his hat Charlie mm-hmm. Coyle stitched on the Minnesota Wild hat right there. So it's, oh, that's wait. freaky. Mm-hmm. It is kind of weird. Oh, be, is Charlie Coyle was he like a? So, I didn't know who Charlie Coyle was until two years ago or three years ago when I had him on my fantasy hockey team. Uh, <laughs> no, there so. we go. Okay, yeah, right. <laughs> and, but also, I mean, he's a Massachusetts guy. Yeah, so. BU guy, yeah. Um, so he's legit. Oh, we won't talk about the BU part because the BU part is... The bean part? Oh. No, 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 no. I'm a BC fan. We know. Oh, okay. All right. I don't know. Once they go out to the NHL, and it doesn't you, matter where they go. Congratulations. Two in a row on your bean pot. Thank <laughs> Two in a row. And the lady, Get I think, here. Uh, woman, too, right? It's coming up and you right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't want to talk about you. that. Hey, I don't know. Um, stink lines. I think that the Bruins made the right move. I know some people are not pleased that they got rid of Donato, but I don't think Donato was in their plans. They, Plus, he's a restricted free agent at the end of the year. They someone, weren't going to sign him. Someone said that they should have traded Anders Bjork, and I'm like... For what? He First, he's... Too injured right now to even like you have can't. any Who value, him, I guess, and he's he hasn't question. really had much NHL time. I didn't think though that that Charlie Coyle though would end up having to give you'd have to give up two players to get him though. That's like I, I would well, think picks a, a third, a third, a fourth, a fifth could have been enough, but maybe not. Yeah, in the NHL, how no, but he's. Are these picks? Th- they're not limited. You can get multi picks for yeah. one player and throw in another player on top of it. But I mean, do people value those picks at all, or is it kind of sometimes? sometimes. It, it, but a fifth it round pick, on there's, the player. there's yeah. uh, like the NFL in that regard. The fifth, the fifth round pick. I think isn't the picks really... are a little bit higher regarded, probably with the NHL, than it would be the NFL. 
It's, oh, really? Sometimes, yeah. Well, yeah. You, I mean... A fifth-round pick in the NFL is really nothing. Well, you never know. You could sometimes. always... A fifth-round pick is... Pool, a fifth-round pick in the NHL is, like, average. That's yeah. like your... Like, like an Once AHL you're, like, player. halfway yeah, through yeah. the first round, like, the first, halfway through the fourth round, it's like... Because I would say, like, the NHL and NFL seem to me... It seemed to me to be this kind of, like... Their drafts are a lot more... A lot deeper. And oh, absolutely. And because you have yeah. to staff so much. Like, the NBA is, like, who cares? I didn't, the, even, I didn't even know MLB the MLB. Too, I, I didn't even know yeah. the MLB had a draft until like four years ago. <laughs> really? So no, that's <laughs> one that we. No, but I, that actually is a good one too, because that is Because cra- how many players do you need? It's so many. The problem, though, for us here in New England is if we win all these championships, you don't get a one you know. through ten pick. So it's like well, whatever. it doesn't even matter anymore because you now you're just picks. thrown into a lottery if you're like five of the worst teams. Right. Oh, so. for the NHL. Which they're debating for the NBA mm-hmm. because of, you know, tank of Yeah, it's all about the ping pong balls, yeah. as we know. Um, the other thing I want to mention before we wrap up the Bruins uh, segment here is in the past month, even before that a little bit, there's always been that criticism of Tuka Rask as goaltender and everything. I think the Bruins have the best one-two punch in, in the NHL uh, for goalies right now. Even though Halak's looking a little shaky right now. You think he is? I, I There were a few... There were a f- I think Halak's been amazing in the past week. I, well, the past, the past week, but before, before... A month ago, I would say Halak was shaky. But I think right still, now... You're, you're he's got, not looking like he was at the beginning of the season yet, but he is getting back up to that point. Rass let up five goals against the uh, San Jose. Yeah, but San Jose is also one of the best, better teams in the Western Conference, so I'm not surprised. Okay. They were up three nothing, which was that was the shock to me. Is was, the goal are the goalies a strength of the Bruins though right now? Oh, absolutely. Okay, who is the hot hand right now? There isn't one. <laughs> you could honestly do a rotation, and I think it's very <laughs> you could fair. argue one or the other. <laughs> it all depends. Basically, on who Cassidy, you like what he's doing right now is going Rask, Halak, Rask, Halak, Rask, Halak. It keeps everybody it fresh, works, yeah. and it seems like the method. It seems like it's working well. Well, it'll be interesting to see who he starts against the Blues with the two days rest. It's got to be Rask, I bet. He didn't play. He didn't play Wednesday night. It, it, so it that'll, most, that, that'll most be likely almost will a week be. off for Rask. It, it might. It most likely will be Rask, but you never know. Interesting. You never know. Do I, they play Sunday too? Do they go back to back or? Yeah, that's the joys of sometimes having your phones <laughs> right on set. They help you. Siri, <laughs> when do the Bruins play this week? No, they don't play on the Sunday. Okay, so they just play one game play Saturday. Saturday. Then I think they then come they home Tuesday. Monday. They come back home Tuesday. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, hold on. Yeah, they don't play Sunday. Let's they come them. home Tuesday against the Sharks again. Okay. So the Western teams are basically Lightning coming back in. Thursday. Thursday, the 28th, we play the Lightning. That's a big game. Mm-hmm. So... Even though we're on a seven-game streak right here. We have three tough matchups. We got three tough matchups here. We got the Blues, who are an excellent hockey team. You have on Tuesday night. Then you have the Sharks coming to town, who are a very good team. Then you have the Lightning next Thursday. So buckle up, folks. (laughs) Buckle up. And you're uh, heading to Columbus. And I'm going to be scouting Columbus and Pittsburgh in a couple weeks. Going out to Columbus to see. Oh, spring break. No, not spring break. Just going out. My cousin has a buddy out there, so we're going out there, oh, going cool. to a Columbus Pittsburgh game. So, oh, you can say hello to Sydney Crosby. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll say more than hello. Uh-huh. You're right. All right, we got to talk about the next team that's up. They stay in the garden, and that's the team that bounces that orange basketball around. What's that? It's um. Sleep. It's called the Celtics. You ever heard of them? No. Oh. I don't they know. Who they just finished are. their All Star break. I'm gonna take a nap. Now. <laughs> <laughs> this is Tom's nap time, time now. This is Phil. Wake up! <laughs> Smelling salts. Tyler help Irving me, clothes. help me to like this team. Just, just tell me right. Help me no, like I'm this not, team. I'm not. I refuse. To. Please because help there's me. No, why? Why would I need to? Because I want to like them. No, you don't. I want to no, give them wanna. every chance I can to like them. No, I, the I only, seriously do. The only do. thing I, I will say is like, don't choose to like them. Just watch them and see. Watch the game. Kyrie, you can hate all you want. And like I said, I, I've said uh, months ago, he's not hes not really a leader, per se. Like, on the court, he can do a lot of things that are like, wow, that's insane, that's great. But just, like, as a Human true being. leader. Yeah, he's not 
and he's throwing people under the bus again. And it's like, yeah, all right. And I'm sure they're all used to it by now. But it doesn't make it less annoying for them or for the media or for us. Because, you know, we want to like them like the, uh, the Bruins or, uh, say, like a scrappy Boston Red Sox team. But that's not, the NBA is not necessarily played like that all the time. It can be. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Uh, and also, like, who knows if he'll be here past uh, July. So well, that's another well, thing. Well, here's the thing. Usually I pay attention to, like, when the NBA All-Star game is just to, like, see who's winning, What's not to even on? watch the game. Yeah. Just to, I it's didn't even game. know the NBA. I didn't even know the game even happened. <laughs> and, yeah. like, here's my question. Is Kyrie acting like this because he's been thrown into trade rumors for Anthony Davis? No, he wasn't being thrown into trade rumors. I thought it. that's what I saw. No, he was, like, he's been, I think the Celtics felt... And maybe he put it in their ear, and maybe they, he made it kind of a real thing where, oh, we might not have Kyrie unless we have Anthony Davis with us. Or that, That's the there's story, a better, Yeah, there's a better chance of having Kyrie stay with, with Anthony, Anthony Davis, Davis. Anthony, than it would just be with Kyrie with the rest of the uh, sure, Brady with bunch. with everyone else. Yeah. Uh, but also, Anthony Davis doesn't necessarily want to come here. Mm. I mean, uh, from says, his mouth. Says his agent. And him. But and then like, he says, oh, no, I think I'd actually want to be here. I don't, when did he say that? He said that like a week ago after. Yeah, I, don't I don't know about that. I don't but, know. It's, it's a soap opera. Yeah, no, it's back and forth. The actual game of basketball is actually pretty entertaining. But um, Then the other story you have with Kyrie is that, um, remember the Lakers game when Rondo hit that buzzer beater? Yeah, sure. Well, that's when LeBron came to town. Yeah. And Kyrie says, oh, I've been talking to LeBron about possibly yeah, coming was... to L.A. and reuniting and I don't know if he talked about like specifically said coming to LA to reunite um, or getting the band back together but there was that was a speculation outside of that yeah but he had called uh, LeBron yeah like after the Orlando game and he was apologizing was like yeah, oh I like should have what you went through blah 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 um, but yeah that's a whole other thing I think uh, Kyrie's out he's out is I mean, this story more of Kyrie not shutting his mouth or is this more of a story because our lovely media in Boston try and make more story up than really and get more substance to something than it is? Well, Here we both. go again with the media. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we're no. guilty. Sorry, we're guilty. No, I mean, it's both. I mean, it's a combination. of They have to write stuff every day. They have to write crap every day. So they'll take anything. And I'm sure the players, like, it's, it's the same monster that fuels itself. But they, they spin it off as, like, something else. They, they have all the right information. It's sure. the way they... Put it out there. And, but it's also all on us, too, because they'll take a, a segment of an interview and they'll play that over. Like, oh, he said this. And then they'll play part of the interview or the whole thing. And like, oh, but he also said this. So, I mean, Kyrie said a bunch of stuff about enjoying where he is, but also knowing that there, you know, there are, are kinks in the armor and there's stuff to, um, you know, to mend. And I, I do I think he's gone? He probably will be. But there's still a chance they can make a deep run and possibly make it to the finals. Mm -hmm. And I think they can. I don't think they the only... Uh, Toronto and Milwaukee, and technically Indiana, are the only team... Big game this right week now. for the Celtics after the All-Star break is against... Tonight. against uh, don't uh, tell people when we do our shows, sir. Is a state, <laughs> oh, it's, no. a, it's a state of mind. Tonight is a state of mind. It's not a real Oh, it's date. okay, okay. It's how I feel in my Milwaukee head. Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks. The and Greek the first. Celtics are playing in Milwaukee. Is I think that they correct? They are playing in Milwaukee. That uh, they haven't done so well in Milwaukee. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean they haven't. They the lost road. all three games in the playoffs they lost last all year. Three. They almost won the second. They almost won game three. Uh, that was pretty close. Game four, I think they weren't. They never were blown out, but they right. had. You know, they had their shots. Just like in Cleveland, they had their shots and they right. didn't, didn't win. And also, um, uh, Milwaukee. Oh, and Philly. They actually won one. On the road. We have always had Philly's number. I'm not scared on Philly. I like Philly, but yeah, yeah. I think you're I'm right. I'm not scared. We, we just are in their head. It's They might be better. It's kind of like how the Capitals are with the Bruins. Oh, is that how? It's the, they, they were on like a 15-game winning yep. record with them. Oh, wow. Well, no, there. I think, yeah, I think there's something there, but I think Philly I'm more nervous dangerous. out of Milwaukee or Toronto Philly would be in the more, East would be for us. Yeah. Philly would be a little bit more dangerous come playoff time because they'll have their stuff together. I think whether we're in their head or not, it, it won't matter. But maybe, who knows? My, my thing oh, here yeah. is, I'll just give you my overall thing is, I, Kyrie doesn't know how to shut up. I'll just say that. You know, the media goes to him, they stick that microphone in, and he just rambles on about whatever the heck he feels. Yeah, he's the first Somebody guy needs to go to, to him. I don't know yeah. if it's Stevens, if he can even say anything to Kyrie or whatnot. 
but just tell them, Kyrie, go play basketball, please. Just shut up. No, because it's like... Maybe it needs to be Al Horford, because it seems like he's such a I- integral part of the but Celtics do you think by leader. This, do you think by this time, you think by now, they, there has, you don't think anyone's said anything? Oh, I think there has been. I think there's been a lot of blowout in that locker room from sure. a lot of different people. I think Marcus Morris has, has you know, chirped too much to cer- certain people. Um, I don't think that the Celtics truly have a leader in that locker room right now. Probably not. It doesn't seem it. It doesn't seem it at the moment. And but it's crazy because it be, they have be all Al, the talent in the Al world. Orford. They do. I mean, they have a lot of talent, I guess. But it's not worth a damn if they're not playing together. You can't look the guys in the room in the eye the same way that you all do and have that one goal of reaching that NBA championship and being finals winners. Yeah. you got a problem. Well, And it's the question of what's going to happen from that. In a way, it's it's... We were all high and mighty on the Celtics, and you know what? I'm just not right now. I don't love what I see. I don't love the players that are representing the Celtics. I think something's going to have to change this summer. I don't know what it is. Well, they're going to have to earn. Do, do we think Kyrie? Do we think Kyrie is doing this because he had to carry the team last year? Because Kyrie I honestly, wasn't here? truthfully, don't feel that Kyrie is as much of the problem as we think it is. I think Kyrie is the one that you need to build on. I think some of the young guys are the problem that, that gets to Kyrie and gets him to the stage he's eh, at. I, eh, I think it's played out. I think, think it is too? Are, I think the young guys are fine. I, I think, think, well, I, think Rozier, like I think Rozier yeah, is been, a big like, problem in there. Been. I think Marcus Morris is a big problem in there. But he's not a uh, he's an old, he's a veteran. Morris, he is. But yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't disagree with you there. I think Kyrie, uh, to Tom's point, like he, this is who this guy is. And no matter how good it'll be, He'll crave, you know, they're He's super models. talented. Incredibly he, he, talented. He'd be stupid not to build around him. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, I think, do I think you can? Sure. I, it's just a matter of, like, who do you go to at the end of the game? And if you feel like Jason Tatum is that guy for the future, who you can go to at the end of games, then that's how it is. Like, in, in that sport, in a lot of sports, who's going to make that play at the end of the game? Well, Danny Ainge has, has some big decisions to make because... The Celtics have the longest drought now out of all of our sports teams That's without winning right. a championship. And it's disgusting to say it's been 10 years, but Here you go. Red Sox and Patriots have been winning. Bruins won in 11. Yeah. It's your turn next, folks. We're too fat. We're too... We're too spoiled, we're too rotten Boston sports spoiled. fans. So. Too fat. The Red Sox are in spring training mode, folks. I'm excited about that. You know, that's my number one sport. Love that baseball. Um, they still have a lot of questions that are going on. The biggest story of the week, though, that came out from spring training is the owners gave a kind of a little recap of how the season's gone on with all the players together, and they came out with an apology on something. I don't know if you guys heard about this, but they apologized for the negotiations of the John Lester contract before John Lester uh, went off to the Cubs. Oh, really? So they had some choice <laughs> words saying that they wish that they wish things did not go the way it was. Yeah. And it was uh, very, very. It made me think a little bit about what they were actually trying to say there. And then I remembered something. I remembered there was one particular player or one particular member of that ownership group who was a part of those negotiations, who is mm-hmm. no longer a part of them anymore. Do you want? You want to know? Do you know who that is? Charrington? Not Charrington. No, it was um, LL. LL. Yeah, oh, Larry, Larry Lucchino. Larry the oh, Lush yeah, was right. not there. Oh yeah, that's right. Larry Lucchino was involved was in drunk? those initial. Larry the Lush is La- that what we're getting. We call him Larry the Lush. Oh. Luscious Larry. Oh, luscious. Oh, I thought you meant like lush, like a heavy drinker. If you remember, it was a... <laughs> and heroin user. They Allegedly. Lo- they, they lowballed John Lester. Yeah, yeah. Because they I didn't want to pay a, him. I think it was five years, 70 million. Because was he 30 at that point? Yeah, they, they, uh, they ended up turning, they ended up being hypocrites on that because then they yeah. go and give David Price the mm-hmm. richest contract ever for a pitcher the next off season. <laughs> but their um, whole thing was they didn't want to, if he was 30-year-old plus, they don't want to give X amount. Correct. Well, believe it or not, I mean, John Lester's yeah. been an amazing pitcher for the Cubs. Yeah. Granted, he's in the National League. Won a World Series. A little, little easier to pitch out there, but yeah. I think the Red Sox wish they did still have Lester here. Might get a little harder if they go out with the, uh, if they come out with the new rule changes that they've been talking about. What are those rule changes? Tell people about those. Uh, so the first one is the universal designated hitter, which means that there would be no pitchers hitting ever again. Uh, also... They're forbidden. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> also, crazy. the uh, the three bat the pitchers have three to face minimum. three batter minimum. Pitcher. 
Um, I'm not and a fan of him. I'm not gonna lie. Then we also have that pitch clock. And then the pitch 20, line, yeah. 20 yeah. second pitch, pitch clock. clock. So. Any of those rules that you uh, you like, dislike? I like all of them. You do. I mean, the the three batter minimum is it. It could go either way, really. I mean. That, so what that happens changes, if you have like a left-handed that, that specialist? That changes a little strategy for. Yeah. Say you have managers. a one lefty up that you know that they really can't hit the left-handed pitcher well, yeah. and you just want him out there for that one batter. It kind of stinks for those guys because they some yeah. of these guys have made a big career on it. Yeah, I mean I think during the playoffs, like if you have that uh, rule for the regular season, then during the playoffs I think it'd be. You can ditch it because, like, every out counts kind of thing. Not right. to say it doesn't during the regular season, but everything's but more so in the playoffs. Yeah. And maybe that's, like, people are like, well, why bother having it? It's like, well, during the regular season, Speeds you Speeds things up. Yeah. And we'll see if it does. And if it doesn't, and if it's just kind of like... Because you're not guaranteed to get those three players right. out either. Right. No. Like, it's not like... But it does, save, it does save commercial time and yeah. commercial breaks. Which, uh, that's kind of an interesting thing, too. Like, how much would they lose in advertising? I don't. Th- I think they would have the same amount. It's all it paid. Was just, yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm not I a proponent know. for either, any of them. I'll tell you. Oh, that. really? I don't like the pitch clock. Why don't you like the pitch clock? Baseball's been played the same way for a hundred years. If people really. Oh, it has been to... played the same way. You have helmets now. Wow. Well, and I you mean, have instant same... replay. And you have gloves. I'm sick and tired. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of at least you bare these, hands. These people coming out, and it's people like my our generation, the millennials. Oh, it's oh. got to be seven innings. The game's oh too God, long. The game of baseball has been played the way it's been forever. Stop messing with it. It actually hasn't, but... I'm saying that not like the helmets sure, sure. and that sort of yeah, stuff. Right. But He's it's been a nine-inning game for forever. That actually changed the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. talking about the majors. When was the designated hitter brought in? The 70s, de- right? 71. Okay. 71. So, I mean, like, that's I mean That's, that's pretty, a big change. Yeah, and also it's pretty recent. Like, within the last, like, 40 years. I think that if, if the pitcher doesn't want to hit in the National League, fine. Then let the DH hit. What's the big deal? I liked – I – so, I was telling Phil before well, we We just started. had our first designated hitter going to the Hall of Fame this year. Who – Edgar oh, Martinez. I, oh, was it? Yes. Oh. Yeah. So, that means Ortiz will be a Hall Edgar, of Fame. Yeah, I, was, no, I was telling Phil before we filmed this that uh, one of my – I had to write a persuasive essay, like, my freshman or sophomore yeah. year of high school, and my argument was that there should be – a designated hitter in the National League. Yep. Um, if there's one rule that they should change that they're proposing um, or talking about, it's that one. I like the 20-second pitch clock. I don't think a lot of the pitchers are going to be fans of it, but it does make the game go about, uh, move a lot faster. Okay. Uh, Chris Sale has like a five-second break between pitches. Chris Sale is phenomenal. If you want to go to a game and get out quick, Chris mm-hmm. Sale is your guy to see. Oh, there you go. He's lightning speed. Yeah. No one but wants... if you don't want to go in, you don't want to see like a... a... Mark remember, Burley. Remember Clay Buckholtz? Oh, yeah. Got a lick there. Mark, Mark, Burley. Mark Burley. Mark Burley, yeah. Mark take Burley the, was Take a... forever. Now, that's a, that's a problem. Yeah. I will totally agree on stuff like that. But honestly, if a guy is taking, you know, 15 seconds between a pitch to throw his thing, well, what's the, 20 seconds. What's the, the well, count? What's so is wrong it with that? It's 20 seconds. Yeah, so you'd be able to. That's fine. If per pitch. Even if it's 25 but, seconds, is that such a big deal? Yeah, but the other, other, other argument that we were talking about before we started filming was, um, you know, calling out the catcher to talk three or four times. Yeah, that's, that, that, that could change. It. Yeah. That could change. Would that count towards the clock too? Would that be on the pitch? Most likely. Yeah. Yeah, they probably have a clock speed. Because I think they. I wouldn't even. I don't know. It's weird when you, we mention that. I, I only picture like the the counter being when they're just on the mound, not necessarily when being visited. Like does it? So yeah, that makes more sense. So, I yeah. do have one rule change that hasn't been discussed that you did that I would like to see implemented, and I'm hoping that that starts within the next off season. And that is, we've gone. Now, two parades in Boston. We had the Red Sox parade and we had the Patriots parade. Mm. And the baseball offseason already had started while those parades were going on. Basically, what I'm saying here is you have a list of about 100 still free agents that are out there that still do not have a baseball team to go with. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You need to have a deadline. like Kind of like how the NBA it, yeah. has their deadline and every other yeah. team. That when it's 12.01 on whatever day it is, yeah. you're free to go sign with these teams. you got a week to do it. Yeah. Or two weeks or whatever, whatever yeah. it would be on that. 
way too straggled isn't, on. Isn't it's, there a it's deadline embarrassing. now? But it just isn't like. No, there really isn't. No. No. You no, know. otherwise Bryce Harper would have been signed by now. Yeah. Let's talk about this too. Um, no, this, I thought this has been like right up that, till the season. These, this is one of the reasons why I was really wanted to do our baseball yeah. segment here oh, today. No, no, is here we go. this past week we saw Manny Machado signed with oh. the San Diego Padres. Padres. I gotta go burn for my for ten hat years, <laughs> three hundred million dollars, which is supposedly low for him. Supposedly low. The really? fire in your eyes. Really, you had to go. Oh, I gotta go to. Me. <laughs> Listen, he only is making thirty million a year. Oh, How is he boy. supposed to live off that? Do you know the market in San Diego? <laughs> it is nuts. I'll tell you that. Whew, wow. yeah. <laughs> you got to tweet him about that. Get no Get professional <laughs> athlete in whatever <laughs> sport None. you are, yeah. None. should be making three hundred or more million dollars to play a professional sport. It is ludicrous. 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 Not ludicrous. <laughs> ludicrous, maybe. Which would be even crazier, anointed one. Crazy is a good word. Crazy. No, ludicrous, it is. It's nuts. It's nuts that we have. We are out of our minds. Well, these athletes thinking that they are this entitled to get this much money from stuff. Do you think if it's somebody an owns a team? If somebody owns a team, that's their God given right. If they own a team and they have X amount, whatever. What do you mean, God given right? Like they, they, they own a sports team. Own, you own the team. If you're Bob no Kraft, else. if you're Bob Kraft and you own the Patriots and stuff. I don't think that's an inalienable right for someone to own a team. Well, I'm just saying, he has the right to make his millions and millions and billions of sure, dollars sure, whatever. Because he owns that team. All right. This is a player who's playing for that team. Mm -hmm. He's a group of 25 individuals that are going out and swinging a baseball bat. Sure. And fielding a ball. And running a base. Mm -hmm. All uh, of which you need for a team to own. You do need a team for that. So if this team doesn't exist... Then that owner is kind of out of luck because they don't have he a is, But so you're telling me that it's better to have a player for ten years at three hundred million. I don't think I'm discussing any of this. Then it saying, would be to have a player that maybe would be to make two million over six no, million I mean, or if, six years. Or if something they pay like them, that? they paid them. So obviously the money is there. The the money is there. That's right. And they were stupidly a, a, willing to do it. A lot of National League teams could probably do it, though, because they have that much money yeah. they don't have sitting there in their yeah. bank. Yeah. Who does, is who Manny Padre, Machado though? worth that much oh, money? Oh, absolutely not. Is no. anyone worth that much no. money? No, that, that's, my, well, that's, it, that's what funny, I'm The funny thing of. is, is yeah, this whole agree, argument, this whole it, argument started like 10 years ago with A-Rod signing yeah. with the Yankees for that It is contract. true. Which was like it is true. How much was that? It was like the biggest at the time. Like yeah, two it was like 250 or something, yeah. 265. But this is where it's going to get real interesting with when the next CBA comes up for baseball. Which they're looking at right now, yeah. I think they're going to get locked out. Because that's the owners and the players are not seeing eye to eye on things. I mean, yeah, because now whose side do you take on Bryce these Harp, sort of things? Bryce Harper's not them. signed right now. So I think it's none of them myself, too. You could tell them the ghost crew. You know, and like, a lot of these owners are doing that. Well, no, I mean, yeah. both of them. Just yeah. like, this has almost nothing to do with us. In no, a way of it has where, nothing to do with us, no. Except it's like what we want. It's just ridiculous. Like, I see players on Twitter and stuff go out and say, oh, I feel so bad because I can't get the contract that I'm looking for. And I say to myself, here's us. Not our nine to five jobs. Yeah, you know, and, and not whatnot. making even close to a you know, million, <laughs> even and, a million. And they're complaining about not making three hundred million dollars. We talked about a lot of certain things here today. We hope that you had a good time as much as we did um, debating all these lovely things. It just so, keeps getting better and better. And we'll <laughs> see you next time on another jam-packed edition of uh, Face the Facts. That's the name of this show. That's correct. We will see you next time. Goodbye.